Right. Um, I am Sam Suprab. I'm working for Queensland Department of Agriculture and Fisheries. Today I'm talking on the fall armyworm monitoring and management aspect. Um, first of all, touch on the monitoring side. We're using some sex pheromone traps. Um, the pheromone traps um, working mainly catching the male, male moth. So this um, pheromone we started in the early direction from March and this actually mainly targeting the full army worm. Also we get some bike catches called holes army worm also. Um, so in the next slides I'll go into the, um, um, the results we find. Um, here you could see the early direction was in the early March, mid-March, then the numbers were fairly low. So the, the red line showing the false army worm was a bit high, then the full army worm, the blue line was less. But in the later part, full army worm is taking over with the blue line, so increasing to really high numbers uh, in the springtime. So the numbers was nearly up to 900 more for a property in two traps um, recorded in September. Then also the winter time, the moths are very active. It was coincided with them. Um, crop infestation in sweet corn. The traps were in the sweet corn area. Um, the sec, sorry. So in this um, full army worm damage pattern in sweet corn, you could get from beginning from seed germinated in come to nearly one or two leaf stage. Um, the full army worm infestation started more or less killing the whole plant at the seedling stage. Then they also, they bore into the stem area and killing the root zone, close to root zone and the plants about to collapse. And then um, foliage damage is fairly, it's like a windowing pattern. You see quite a lot of foliage eaten by the hungry caterpillars and they bore into the middle part and um, they're hiding into the whirl area and the tassels also get infected and see some poor pollination happening in the cups and lack of grind filling and the tip damage and side damage is cause more damage. Sometimes the damage is between 30 to 80 percent become common in the later part of the seasons. In also the recently some limited infestation we found in capsicum crop. There was a bit of concern but in this bit early, early time is very hard to detect. It's not showing any symptom like um, sweet corn, but in the like a small entry hole in the stroke area, they started feeding inside. We don't see much damage outside, but when they come to the bigger stage, the fourth or fifth star stage, they more or less eating the whole middle core of the capsicum part, and some they we seen some are prepared inside the fruit. Um, getting into the management side, um, we got some. Insecticide resistant testing um, with um, New South Wales DPI, Dr. Grant Group um, did that. We sent some sample from Bowen Burdekin area and they found all the more tested on the sample were rice strain. There are a few different strain overseas, but uh, what we find here is the rice strain. And the directed resistant allele associated with carbamate and open phosphate insecticide group. So they tested in the molecular basis for three mutation points and the heterozygous um, alleles was around 42 and 72 percentage in the homozygous is one percentage. So the next slide, um, the, one of the insecticide, the carbamate insecticide called methomil is um, commonly used for in the crop for a long time and also recently the methomil is permitted uh, by APPMA use again for army worm on range of crops in that in the permit list over 50 crops was listed and we don't know it's working or not. That's, um, we did some trial studies to evaluate how it's working and the um, sweet cane trial crop at two leaf stage, uh, we planted, uh, sorry, we sprayed at two liter per hectare label rate at four leaf stage. Um, then the egg masses were collected to one day after um, spray and incubated with artificial diet and see how many eggs were catching and assess their um, uh, mortality level. Um, this is a result we found. We around 12 egg masses collected. They are each got uh, quite a lot of eggs and for number of eggs catched per egg, 
to egg mass on the y axis and see all the egg masses the 12 of them got catched so that mean the insecticide spray didn't kill them for some reason either it's not working or not um, targeted into the egg masses so just to confirm this one again we did the second experiment to see we went up to 25 egg masses here and number of egg masses per catch per egg masses here and see some up to 100 eggs per 100 egg caterpillars per catch uh, from some eggs and there are only two egg masses at um, very low amount of catch so that indicate actually spraying some broad spectrum chemical if it's not killing the eggs actually you're disturbing the natural balance and also um, harmful to the beneficiaries and also in the meadow mill spray we did some larval mortality study we are on 30 plants and in control and meadow mill spray plot we checked we didn't find any any big significant reductions that mean there some larvae still surviving in within two days after spray so into the one of the new insecticide or um, narrow spectrum insecticide called success in you know it's called spinetrotramine site and that one also we tested at the higher level rate at 400 ml per hectare and we sprayed um, with the control and success sprayed one it coming a reasonably good control for small stage larvae the early stage larvae but the medium and large larvae are get protected inside the crop and they surviving within the crop so that mean the targeting the timing is really important so the next um, trial we doing now is to look how we can protect the early part of the crop here with the trial only started this month um, on the 5th of november november we see so some seeds with this different treatments so soil treatment and seed treatment the seed was treated with two different chemical and also soil application into the furrow and drill the seeds into the furrow and also we had some plant hole trench treatment uh, three days after germination and we did some assessment to the plant depth and foliage one week and two weeks the i'll just show the first week result here see that soil test treated one is two weeks after uh, germination here the seed treatment is um two weeks after germination the control more or less all the plant got killed i could see only few plants left here the badly damaged and other three rows here completely dead and the plant drench was it's a half a is not really giving good protection we look into the results um, the blue bar the blue lines here is showing um, the mortality of the plant the death of the plant on the, the y axis 2 see within a week the um, the control we had around 30% of the plant dead and so the soil and tree ones for the level was less than 5% plant dead so this a uh, couple of treatments are working so it's still bit early to comment on this but there are a bit of promising result we finding also the average average damage score how much the plant foliage eaten by the caterpillars on the treated one compared to control the damage score in the soil and the seed tree these treatments are reasonably low so this we looking at some biological control uh, option here um we did some survey up in the local here looking at some endemic uh, predators what we find and we find some shield bugs um pretty good predators on this for polar army worm and other army worms and this one actually we maintaining a lab colonies here to do some laboratory studies and these polar um, the shield bugs are feeding on the large polar army worm larvae um they are reasonably good predators the adults uh, we found up to consume up to one or two larvae per day um but the nymph stages are less than the smaller larvae less than a half a larvae per day and also we find some ear weeks are reasonably good predators but um they also pest on some crop uh but they also feeding on one we just doing bit of study and see an assassian box another one we found um feeding on polar army worm larvae directly so these are the bit of early observation and some sampling studies and we doing some evaluation on these predators and this any potential on this 
and also some parasitoids work we are looking at so many natural predate, uh, parasitoids endemically available um, we collected some egg parasitoids um, to look at these any egg parasitoid we can find and fall army worm eggs was uh, collected on the trichocrama released area for heliotis and unfortunately we didn't find much egg parasitism with the trichocrama at this stage so we collected over 100 egg masses and find only two or three had a few eggs got parasitoids. Uh, but we found two larval parasitoids and um, endemic species found locally. Um, it's around 90 larvae from a couple of locations. We find them two different parasitoids. We still need to be identified this. So there's a bit of um, promising with um, this some natural thing, but still a bit some work to do on this. And in summary, or could say full army worm activity was very low uh, during the March, April and increasing to higher levels during the winter, spring months. The early part is pretty low than increase. The egg uh, were detected at seedling stage. We found some continuous egg lay happening every day. So it's, that's a big challenge for spraying uh, because the caterpillars always there after they're catching. So the meadow meal is not, um, working pretty not very working promising and the success neo is working there's a few more insecticide available and that's um but okay thank you very much all probably happy to answer your question in the q a session